Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16 beta two has been out for a couple weeks and has even more new features in it that I didn't mention in the last two videos. Also, we'll talk about what it's like to use after a couple of weeks, when to expect public betas to release for iOS 16, and then talk about iOS 15.6 beta four and more toward the end of the video. First, let's start with some new features. If we go into settings, scroll down to accessibility, scroll down to where we have audio slash visual scroll to the bottom. We have led flash for alerts. You can see now it's a separate option menu on the previous beta beta one. We just had a switch to turn that feature on for led flash for alerts. Now with beta two, we have some new options where we can flash while unlocked and flash in silent mode. So a slight update there with additional options. Now also within settings, if we go down to general, then go to language and region, you'll see I've changed the region to Sweden, even though I have the preferred language of English. However, there's some new options here. Once you change this in beta one, you can see on the left, if I change it to Sweden, we only have region calendar and temperature. Now with beta two, we have measurement system, first day of the week, date format, number format, and then of course, live text at the bottom for that option, if it exists for that language. So you can see, we have those options here a little bit different and some more changes where if you prefer a different date format, you can change that now within notes under notes. If you have a note with a phone number or something that the iPhone can recognize, you can now make a call directly from here, tap on the phone number, select it, and then scroll to the side. You'll see that we can now call that number. Now this is just a random number I put in. You can also send a message, FaceTime, FaceTime audio, and it also sees other apps that you could communicate with such as telegram or WhatsApp in the previous beta, you didn't have those options. So if I select the number in beta one, we didn't have the option. We can share it and translate it, but we can't make a call directly from it. When you're setting up a phone for the first time and maybe setting up cellular for the first time, it looks a little bit different than it did before. Thanks to Matt for sending this one in. You can see here on beta one, it looks a little different where we have some different icons or glyphs with beta two that look a little nicer for you. QR code and transfer from another phone. When you connect AirPods to your phone, you know, we have a new section. I've showed you that before. And under that section, we can now quickly get to accessibility settings if we scroll down. So we can now just jump right into accessibility settings for the AirPods. So that's something a little bit new in beta two. If we go into the books app in books, tap on a book and wait for it to load. And now, instead of turning the pages, you now scroll top to bottom. I'm not sure I really like this change as it was more like reading a book before. Hopefully it's only a bug, but as you can see here with beta one, if we want to turn the page, I can just grab and turn the page. You're not able to do that in beta two for some reason. So it's a change they've made again. Hopefully it's a bug. Now, if you're using continuity camera with Mac OS Ventura, that allows you to use the camera on the back of your phone as a camera for your computer's webcam. We'll go ahead and connect it. And there's a new option there. So if I open FaceTime on my Mac, give it a second, you'll see it says connected. And now we have the option to pause the video so we can tap on pause or resume. And that allows us to pause the camera for a moment. If maybe we need to check something in the room or talk to someone else within the photos app. If we go to a live photo, tap on the live photo, tap live in the upper left. That's not a new menu, but you now have the option to turn it off completely. So if you want to turn off a live photo on a specific photo, you can do that within messages. If you long press or haptic press as Apple calls it on either a message thread or someone you have pinned, you'll have a new option. So we'll long press and you can see at the bottom, we now can mark that as on red. This wasn't there for me in beta one at least. And so that's how you can access that. If you want to mark a whole conversation as unread. If you use Siri to change your brightness or check your brightness on your phone, the actual interface is a little bit different. What's my screen brightness at? You can see on the right with beta two, the actual brightness setting is a little bit larger, making it a little bit easier to access within mail. You can now slide to the right and save it for later. So tap on later, and now you can have it remind you in an hour tonight, tomorrow, or later. So it's nice to have that option in mail. Finally within mail, if you go to send a PDF or a file that's locked, there will now be a little lock in it, letting you know, you'll need a password in order to access it. So it's just a small visual update to help you out a little bit more. If we go into the contacts app within contacts under lists, if you press and hold under one of your contact lists. So for example, here I have favorites. You can now export those contacts easily by long pressing or haptic pressing on them. So any of these here where, where we have 673, I can email all of them 
export, rename, or delete them. It's just a small change to make it much easier to get your contacts off your phone to a different device. Within the wallet app, under your cash card, in the upper right, there's three dots for a menu now. That wasn't there with Beta 1. We can now search or view card details. We also have a send and request button I talked about in the initial What's New video, but as you can see, there's no option in the upper right and no send or request button. So they've made it a little bit different. Even if you set this up, it still won't appear. So something a little bit new. When you take a screenshot and tap on the screenshot, if you tap on done, you'll now have an option at the bottom to save to quick note. Now I showed this before where you can actually tap the save in the upper right, the share icon, and then save it that way. But it also makes it easier to do just at the bottom here with save to photos, save to quick note, save to files or delete screenshot or cancel within settings under wallpaper. There's a change. If we go to a wallpaper, add a new wallpaper, then we'll add a photo. You'll see here's the wallpaper I'm currently using. We'll tap on done. And if we customize that same wallpaper here for the home screen, we'll customize the current wallpaper. It will now blur it by default in the background. So you'll see legibility blur is on. We can turn that off of course, or just leave it blurred, but now it does it by default and gives you the option. Apple has updated maps with outlines of national parks. So you can see it, it's fairly faint. I wish they would darken this a bit, but it gives the border, for example, of the Grand Canyon National Park, where there's a border outlining the entire park. This is a pretty large park. So you'll see if to zoom out a bit, but it shows in a border around the park where everything is. This works for any national park in the United States. So you can see with beta one on the left, there is no border there. Also, if we scroll up and go into the guide about the park, tap on more on beta two, we can add photos right here. It's not available in the same menu dropdown on beta one. Also, we can access the same thing a little bit lower where it says add your photos or add photos. They've changed the way it looks to be sort of a quick menu instead of a menu at the bottom. So slight changes within maps. Within music, if you go to the artist page, they've gotten rid of the see all button when you're seeing all of their lists for top songs or albums or anything else. So there's no longer a see all button for some reason, they've gotten rid of it and you can just scroll through. I kind of liked the see all option. So hopefully they bring it back, but currently it's gone with beta two. It could be updated maybe with beta three or the public release. Also to go along with music. If you go down to your control center and go into Shazam haptic press or long press, you'll see that we have our history here. With beta two, we now have this information synced with what we looked up with Siri. So if you're using Siri music to maybe search for a different sound that's playing or song that's playing, now that information will be here in your history synced with Shazam. Why this wasn't done before is hard to say, but Apple did acquire Shazam. So maybe it's just taken time to integrate that code, but finally it's synced up within spotlight search. If we tap on search or just pull down from the middle, we can now create a timer from within spotlight search. So you'll see. I search for timer, we can tap on create timer and it will say for how long do you want to create it based off a shortcut and more. So we can finally use the timer within our spotlight search. Now in watchOS 8.7 beta four, there's a new feature or maybe a warning. And thanks to Brom for sending this in from tech render. One of my friends over there. And if we go into photos, you can see here that when he was using his Apple watch, he was going for a run in high temperatures, about hundred degrees. The cellular data option was not selectable on his watch. After that, it said cellular will not be available until Apple watch cools down. I haven't seen this before and he hadn't either. Now, if you have, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, but it's just something that's different that we haven't seen before. As far as remaining bugs and issues with iOS 16 beta two, it's an early beta. So keep in mind, there's going to be quite a few. One is a pretty major bug for me. And that has to do with messages in group conversations. Sometimes the text box completely disappears. So if I go into messages, you'll see here, I'm unable to type in this. If I go on my computer, I can type in this message box or sometimes on the iPad. And then all of a sudden it will magically reappear. Sometimes rebooting works. Sometimes it doesn't work, but right now it's not working properly. So this has been a bit of a pain. And of course I reported that in the feedback app is that something that Apple will need to address. 
Also, setting a wallpaper can be quite buggy. If we go into wallpaper and maybe I go to add a new wallpaper, we'll go to photos. I'll just add the current wallpaper, tap on done. Sometimes it doesn't save the actual homepage wallpaper. Sometimes it blurs it, sometimes it doesn't, and it just seems to be having errors here and there. So this is something they haven't fixed completely and sometimes customizing one or the other, it won't change. This continues to be an issue I'm hearing about from quite a few people. Also the other day, I actually set an alarm on my clock here and it didn't go off in the morning because it actually failed to boot up. It crashed, went to a black screen, the phone didn't turn on and I had to hard reset it in order for the phone to come back to life. It was on a MagSafe charger. However, thankfully my Apple watch was working properly and the alarm went off on this, but my phone didn't work properly. So that's definitely a reason not to use the beta on your main phone as I've talked about before. Also, sometimes music will just stop and then not play at all. And then I'll have to start it again or close the app altogether and start over. And then also the phone does seem to get warm from time to time. In fact, right now it's quite a bit warm, not terribly hot compared to beta one, but it still does get quite, quite warm and drains the battery a lot. As far as iOS 15.6 beta four, that has been very stable for most people. It seems to be the most stable version of iOS 15, and it should be at this point. Many people in the YouTube community poll, which we'll check in a moment, said it's quite stable, has very few issues and has much better battery. They're getting through the day without a problem. So let me share the battery on this and then we'll talk about battery on iOS 16. We go into photos, thanks to Abhishek for sending these in, but today he used one hour and 53 minutes of screen on time and 38 minutes of screen off time. This is on an iPhone 11 Pro Max and used under 25% of his battery. If we take a look at the day before, four hours and three minutes of screen on time, one hour and 32 minutes of screen off time, and 40% of his, his battery was used for background activity on Instagram and WhatsApp. And he used about 70% well, about or 60% of his battery. So it varies depending, of course, on what you're doing, but sometimes it easily get you through a day with more than 50 to 60% left just depends on your device. But most people report the best battery life of iOS 15, not everybody, but 99%, which we didn't have earlier on. As far as battery life in iOS 16 beta two, well, you can expect that to be pretty terrible. It's an early beta and that's not the focus. But if we take a look at my battery life, my battery health is at 100% and my battery life over the last eight days, it actually wiped out my battery life for some reason, maybe with a hard reboot or when it hard rebooted, but now it's working. And you'll see yesterday, only one hour and 32 minutes of screen on time, six hours and three minutes of screen off time. And it used 50% of my battery. That's pretty terrible battery life and you'll see I'm only getting about, well, usually I'm going to bed with about 30 to 40% of my battery. Not great. Some people report it's better. It's been about the same as beta one, maybe a little bit better for me. So on the iPad, if we go into settings, it's been fairly stable here, but if we go to battery, we'll give it just a moment. You'll see the last 10 days I charged it. Well, the other day at 8 AM to 100% and we're down to 56% after about two to three hours of usage. So three to six hours, usually five or six hours is what I say, depending on how you're using it seems to be holding that. However, it's been fairly bug free with the exception of stage manager. Sometimes that causes an issue, but in general, it's been pretty bug free compared to the iPhone. There are occasional crashes for me on it though, and it's still definitely not ready for the public. And that leads me to, should you install iOS 16 beta two? At this point, just wait for the public beta as it's coming out in July. We're already in July, so I would expect the public beta to come out probably this coming week. Apple has not specified a date, but Monday is a holiday in the United States, July 4th or Independence Day, so maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. And then also iOS 15.6 release candidate, I would expect this week. Typically, we don't wait between betas when we're after beta three or four. Usually it will be weekly, so I would expect a release candidate with a final release probably in the following week. Then we'll have maybe beta three this week, or maybe Apple will push that to the following week as well. Sometimes the public beta will be beta two of the developer beta. Sometimes it will be beta three. It could be somewhere in between, but either way, I'll let you know as soon as those are available. I think the final version of iOS 15 will be in late August, like they normally do, probably at this point with 15.7, and then a final release of iOS 16 in mid-September, along with the iPhone 14, 14 
plus or 14 max 14 pro and 14 pro max all of those things are coming in september and we should have a very busy fall with apple releases now as far as the youtube community poll you can see here at the time of this video there's 8.7k votes or 8700 votes and 98 comments that's where i got all of the information for this video so thanks to everyone that voted and commented and if you want to check this out you can see it on the community page for some reason it's not accessible on an ipad the youtube app but you can see it on safari or any other web browser. So 9% are on iOS 15.6 beta 4, 21% are on 16 beta 2, 60% are on 15.5 or public versions and older, 2% are on 14.8 or older, and 8% are using Android. So thanks again to everyone that commented and voted. Now, as far as the YouTube community poll, I went through every comment and pulled out a few comments that I thought would be most relevant to what we were talking about earlier. So we'll go into notes here and you'll see I've pasted them here. And Nitten says, I must say iOS 16 beta two is solid and works amazingly well with minor bugs using it on my main device and enjoying the iOS 16 so far. Now that's not the experience that I think most are having. It's okay, but definitely still buggy for some, but sometimes it can be great as well. The next one is from Chinapen Nicholas. And they said, I'm running iOS 15.6 beta four on an iPhone SE 2020, and it has been good so far. Stable and battery life is okay from the SE standard. The next one is from Be Real that says I'm running iOS 16 beta two on my iPhone eight plus and it's running smooth. I just have problems every once in a while with Apple music sometimes when it force quits. So that's a problem for some people it seems to be an issue on the betas quite a bit for me as well. And so iOS 16 continues to change a lot, add a ton of features and little conveniences. And of course I expect even more with beta three and the public release. So look for that this week. Hopefully Apple hasn't confirmed that, but we, they did say July and we can expect it pretty soon along with probably iOS 15.6 RC and maybe a final release within another week or so. If you found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.